Let me introduce you to D I R T. Oh, there we go. Hey. Hey, what's up, my dude? I didn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, we got a smoking problem, dude. <laughs> Amen to that. I, I I didn't know for a second if I, if I had something, you know, different in my you know, dinner tonight, and I was tripping, or. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, they all like sideways and shit. <laughs> Not, I mean, like, honestly. No, you're good now. It would be better if you did. You know, this would be a way crazier interview. <laughs> but I don't condone anyone that, you know, still wants to kick back and relax. Don't don't take that by any stretch of imagination. I still kick it even though I don't kick it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's you're super quiet. Can we could we possibly can we start this over? Yeah. Yeah, I can send you a new invite and go from there. How are you doing tonight, man? I am doing pretty good. It's been a uh, <laughs> been a little bit of a day, you know, work, work was a little bit crazy and all that stuff. And uh, my weekend even was a little bit crazy. I ended up uh, doing some home improvement projects and I kind of ended up kind of biting off a little bit more than I could chew at initially from the get go. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's why I was kind of like pushing times around and all this other stuff. And then I had to go get a part uh, yesterday morning. And that's why I wanted to push it until noon and so, yeah. so on and so forth. So, but anyways, yeah. So, no, I'm doing good, though. Doing good. How are you guys doing? Honestly, not too bad. Um, just hanging out. Uh, Mo came over a little while ago. I was making a beat when he came in. Um, uh, my girl's out doing laundry. It's a pretty normal Monday. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I was no. just at a gathering of like 3000 people and everyone was like coughing on each other. It was great. Nice, nice, nice. No, uh, you know, let's be real here. Didn't viruses start on the internet? So like, <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, uh, isn't it? Isn't anxiety like the uh, the equivalent of like that virus where like the tab opens up like three million times? Oh yeah, and, and you just, can't close it out. Uh, the only way you're gonna be able to stop it is Control Alt Delete and shut the fucker down. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> or you just hear those infamous things after it all gets said and done. You got mail. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find something. I I was gonna clean my goddamn uh, pipe out so I could pack it up with some fresh fresh flour. And, oh wow, yeah. And, we just uh, yeah. I'm, well, I'm we're gonna have to there. spark that back up though. I was like extremely toasted when you when uh you know the first call happened. So I was like, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, you know. But we're from, you know, as you know, we're from Maine. Or I'm right. from Maine, so it's I'm like Maine too, yep. it's amazing. Yeah, no, we it's it's you know uh, when I was uh, doing the interview with uh, Marcel Black, um, he was uh, saying he goes, "That's why I love all all y'all from Maine." He goes, "Y'all just cool. You can smoke your weed. Y'all just be you, and no one ain't gonna shit on you for being you." And it's just like. I was like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then go take a hit off my pipe around the podcast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, that's how we do. But uh, yeah. All right. So let's get the proper introductions here, though. I am here, none other than talking dirt with dirt, with none other than seven quarters. And now we got MoFlo on deck as well. That was unexpected, uh, <laughs> but that's awesome because that works. I like that. Um, so with that being said, I really appreciate you guys hopping on the show here. Uh, you know, it's been a long time coming, as we all know. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me finally. And me as well, unexpectedly. <laughs> hey, well, well, funny thing was, you know, you were on the book. So it, what oh, was yeah. it? It was it was going to happen. So um, it's just now that you're both here, this is going to be like a special event. Like we might have to drag this out a little bit longer, depending on your time and, you know, make this like a two part mini series, you know, just to get everyone, you know, hooked on it, you know, hey. but, uh, yeah, well, hey, it's what... <laughs> let's, let's you know, I'm it. not, I'm not here to steal anyone's, you know, spotlight or anything like that though. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to start with, uh, the none, none other than seven quarters here and, uh, get right to the, uh, get go. I gotta ask you, how just start? I just start with the name. Oh wow! Okay, finally, this is a cool question. So it it goes like 
So seven quarters is like a sacred geometry shape. It's like seven circles in the same diameter. It's like one. I, if you take seven circles and you put them all together, it represents it. You know what I mean? You can see it. Okay. But the nickname seven is something that's like I've had for a long time because when I was young, uh, I had long hair and I looked like the guitar player from Slipknot uh number seven mick thompson yeah yeah so uh yeah like my mom's boyfriend called me like number seven all the time so i i kind of like adopted <laughs> that nice. and then got really into tool and like you know sacred geometry and all that stuff and then kind of adopted that and then i don't know it just stuck and i've never had to change it which is uh i think like a huge blessing because a lot of people they gotta like you know what i mean they cycle through names and it's like hard for them to like find that branding i feel like i hit it like right away you know what i mean yeah no that i definitely fits you i mean i i didn't know you know if you're referencing when you said seven cores like you know that was all that you had in your chain you know in your pocket when you started because it could have been a reference to that you know as far as probably yeah. or some level of that magnitude or whatnot but no that's cool i like that with the geometrical shapes and shit like that that's cool yeah i and honestly though i do like you know like the different interpretations of it like i'm working on an album with uh, a producer out of nashua new hampshire named a biza and we're calling it like buck 75 or like dollar 75 and it's like you know it can be represented in different ways and i think that's kind of like cool as well you know like i i don't I have my representing of it, but you know, like it's, it's kind of up for interpretation as well, in my opinion. And I use it differently and you know what I mean? Like in my raps. So. Well, and honestly, I think uh, any, um, any talented uh, performer with their name should be able to have that open door with their name and yeah. not necessarily be hindered to use it in a one set mannerism or whatever it may be. Um, I mean, you take my name, for instance, you know, friggin' it started with JT Dirty. Now it's evolved to kind of just the dirt um, by nickname. And, you know, it it fits, you know, but I still go by JT Dirty because that's the root of it all. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's just one of those things. That's why I always uh, I, I love the fact that when you can take your name and use it in so many different interpretations, um, you know, so. Yeah, take the floor. Oh, so I think for the both of us even, like having like multiple different things that we call ourselves is like, you know, like huge thing. Like I, I like I have like, you know, seven quarters and then I have like Sev Love X and then I have like the Elephant Man. I had DJ. I haven't Invisible heard that one. For a minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> MoFlo is like, yeah, Mo Flo, what do I got? I get the hip hop druid. That's what I've been rolling with. Head Mo DB. Mo DB. <laughs> the headless horseman. I got <laughs> the headless horseman. You, couple, you know, you gotta get a couple of them in there. Bad American, you know, obviously off the you know, off the album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. no, I uh you know, a couple of ideas that I was, you know, jotting around was uh you know, like in reference, like a nickname was the Reaper of Rap. And the, the, the reason mm -hmm. why was because I was just so dark and morbid about the way I was talking about shit, you know, as far as my, my love life and stuff like that. And yeah. um, and I guess the other reason behind it was because I thought that was so hot shit that everything I was touching, I was killing, you know. So it was like, ah, Reaper Rap, you know, I'm killing it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So there was that kind of reference behind it. But, you know, I saved it and I haven't used it for anything. And it's like, I'm starting to write it in some of my newer stuff now that I'm working on. And it works so much better than anything I ever thought about using it before prior to. So it was like, I'm glad I saved it. And not yeah, not yeah. It soon, you know, but uh, yeah, that's dope. But I anyways. think like for me, like that having multiple names comes from liking dudes like Cool Keith or like MF Doom even. <laughs> You know, like he has like MF Doom, Victor Vaughn, you know what I mean? The villain, just regular Doom, Metal Fingers, Cool Keith is like Black Elvis. Rest in peace. You know what I, I mean? I might add on that note. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, my dude. Mm. Yeah, for no sure. No doubt, no doubt. I uh, I knew very little about him, and then when uh, I saw the post about him passing, I was like, you know, I ought to look him up more and get get to know the guy a little bit more and all that stuff. And I watched a couple of videos and stuff now, and I was like, oh, you know, like, he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I I've been like, so I mean. For me, like, I've known about MF Doom since I was, like, 13. And when I was, like, 13 and – or even younger than 13, because the first time I heard him ever was, like – he was on the Gorilla song, November Has Come. Yeah. um, Off of Demon Days, which I don't remember what year that came out specifically, but it's in the early 2000s. So it's, like – I heard it then and I didn't even realize it. And then later on, like I heard him on adult swim and saw his like Christmas special and all that. And I was like, wow, this guy is crazy. So I've been a huge fan. And like, I think that for me personally, like I wouldn't even be able to like exist and do the type of rap that I do if it wasn't for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I yeah. cried. I cried when I found out on New Year's. I was like, ah! you know what I mean? Like, literally cried. So, you know, and that, that fucked, fucked up thing is like, people, you know, say, like, hey, you know, they're just, just a celebrity. It's like, well, no, 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 no. Listen, to most, they might have been just a celebrity, but there was few people that they inspired. And you got to take that in consideration. And especially if they're in a art, you know, type format that just is meant to inspire people in one way, shape, or form um yeah and that's kind of you know in a sense what we're all in this you know business for is you know to express art in any way uh that we can and uh you know that's why it's like it's cool that the fact that you have those artistic minds come up with like all those different names that you guys just listed off you know and i by the way i'm i was gonna say it earlier but now that i just looked and saw it again moflo love the deadpool hat just saying I oh, appreciate it. I'm, I'm big, <laughs> big Marvel buff, so I, I always have to point that shit out, you know. <laughs> always. <laughs> hey, I appreciate. Uh no, I, I not only that, I love cool hats. I uh I got um quite a few different hats myself, and uh, I got like Batman ones and stuff like that too. I don't usually rock them; they usually just hang up on the wall, like display or whatever. But. I got a hat collection, like a woman has a shoe collection. <laughs> dude, I honestly, me too. And I think, I mean, this dude has like many different Deadpool hats. Yeah, I got even. like four or five, I think. Oh, four yeah. or five Deadpool hats. Yeah, you got a decent collection yourself. Dude, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm rocking tonight. It's the Adventure Team Marlboro Red Hat. Oh, nice. I don't even nice. smoke cigarettes, but you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> I'm still, you know, influencing the masses uh, via like subliminal messaging on my yeah. hat. So, <laughs> did you get that through like Mar the Marlboro Miles at all, or through that program? Is that so, what from? So I did not get that through through it, but like, yeah, um, That's my girlfriend's stepdad uh, got this at like a yard sale, and I have another one, dude. Hold on one second, one. Second. Please bear with me. <laughs> Please hold. Make Look back after these brief messages. <laughs> oh, Please doggy. stand by. <laughs> you got it? No. I don't uh, think I even have it. It's uh, gone forever, bro. Oh, no. Forever? No, probably not forever. But. Snap. So I just got to say, man, you know, you just made me wait an hour for nothing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's true, man. Like, Anyways, the idea is you can <laughs> anyway. look and picture it. It's a it's a red suede hat, um, kind of like this that has like white Marlboro like stitched into it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That thing is know. awesome. I don't know where it is. It's like not hanging up, which is a shame. Shame on me. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Well, you know, if I just saying though, no, if it was hanging up, that white part wouldn't be white anymore. What? I'm saying the white on the Marlboro, it probably wouldn't oh, stay yeah. white anymore because of smoking. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know True. what I mean? So if it was hanging up, so, but, but no, that sounds like a badass hat. I actually have one of the Marlboro, uh, you ever heard of those uh, Fuji folding bikes? They're like, yeah, yeah. they're like mountain bikes and they fold up and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, I got my Mar when I was 
I used to smoke Marlboros. I used to collect the Marlboro miles and I ended up getting one of those Marlboro folding bikes. And I freaking thought that thing was the coolest freaking bike ever. Um, yeah. I, ended up, I ended up like selling it to somebody for like 300 bucks when I, you know, only got it by ripping off the Marlboro miles off of my packs of cigarettes every time I smoked, but got to think of how many packs of cigarettes I smoked to get that damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> how many, honestly, how many do you think it was? Oh, geez, man. I mean, it took me, <laughs> I, I got that at my 10 year mark of smoking and I started collecting year one. Oh, wow. So with 10 years of a pack a day, at least bare minimum. That's insane. Yeah. Well, that's devotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, I need this bike. <laughs> I just need this bike that I can heal my lungs back. <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> I just need this bike so I can ride to get more smokes at the store. <laughs> Oh shit! All right, uh, now, back, back off to my bad habits. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, oh, dude, gotta yeah. say everybody's uh, got bad habits, dude. It's no worries at all. Oh, I know. It's just you know, I try to tell them to stop, you know, in my head, but they keep they keep coming back. <laughs> <laughs> like, just do it one more time. You won't regret it. I swear. <laughs> and then as you're doing it you're like oh i kind of regret this <laughs> oh, dude, 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 yeah. no not even as i do it it's when i pay for it is when i regret it i'm like oh, fuck. oh. i remember this this, this costs a lot of <laughs> shit <laughs> what the fuck dude <laughs> how'd i even fucking put gas in the car i can't remember <laughs> oh, man. all right ah shit anyway so back to music <laughs> Um, now knowing how you got the name, when did you actually get into it? Like, when did you actually start like really buckling down and trying to put songs together and, you know, establish a name for yourself in hip hop? Okay. So, um, I first started kind of rapping around the time when I was like 19, but I wasn't like, I recorded a bunch of songs. None of those songs are on the internet anymore. And I took a long time away from it. When I was 21, I played my first hip hop show. I'm 26 now. So when I was 21, I played my first show and I totally fucked it all up. Um, It was awful. So I basically had to, um, I don't know. I took a long time away from it as well. And, uh, like, eventually, when I was around the age of, like, 25, like, really last year, kind of the year before, is when I started getting, like, really serious about it again. Yeah. Like, I put out my EP, uh, Cure and Echo, I think in 2018, and then I put out, like, my first full length this year, um, and I kind of just did a lot of, like, shows last year in between that. So, um, that's kind of where I am right now. Nice. Nice. Now, um, you were talking about, you know, how, uh, your first, uh, show was like a disaster or whatever. Now, th- is there anything like particular that like made a disaster or was it the whole thing in general? I mean, did you show up without pants and like, give us something that, like, you know, <laughs> uh, okay. So, <laughs> Here is a couple of things. Like, the first thing is, anybody who knows me, Mo can attest to this, sometimes I trip up on my lyrics. Okay. This was a disastrous tripping up of my lyrics. Like, I'm, I've come to the point now where, like, if I'm starting to feel like I'm tripping up, I've, I have a freestyle muscle now. So I can, like, yeah. it doesn't matter as much because I can save myself kind of, like, before it happens. Dig yourself. But before, I was like, what is happening? And I was trying to, like, spit stuff that was absolute nonsense, and it wasn't connecting to me, like, personally. So yeah. I wasn't really, like, I was just, like, spitting, like, orbital, sporbital, core, orbit, endorsed, endorsement, sports, raps that make no sense. So yeah. it didn't really, like, speak to me. And then... After I was tripping up and stuff, it wasn't so, so bad. But then at the end, um, 
a good friend of mine, Mr. DJ Myth, mm -hmm. I was jokingly like, as a 21 year old, and I didn't know him then, I was like, in a DJ solo from DJ Myth. And he looked at me and went, and like just turned the beat down. Like he like tank stopped me and was like, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I'm seven quarters. Have a good one. And then I didn't rap again for a while. <laughs> but now him and I are like pretty good friends. I, I like, um, you know, he showed up on Nightmare Land and he showed up on um, this Christmas album that I released um, called The Gift. And with the DJ solos. With the DJ solos. Yeah, yeah. He's got the DJ solos now, and I don't have to get tape stopped. And it's like, that's, that's a miracle. <laughs> that's great. That's great. So no, that, that um damn no, that's cool. Uh now uh so when you did Nightmare Land, gotta ask you, like, what was the uh like the whole mindset of titling it Nightmare Land with you know the the whole plat platform of the whole album, so to speak? What was the thought process with that? So um the first thing that happened was I read a book called nightmare land which is where the album title was like taken from honestly i don't remember the name of the author because he's like it's like a really weird made up name you okay. know what i mean like it's yeah, not yeah. his real name at all um but it talks a lot about like um you know like paranormal occurrences and like you know uh like you know, like Incubi and like sleep paralysis and uh, ambient zombies and like all sorts of stuff like that. And I took all of that as I was reading it and I kind of found like things in my life that I thought could like tie into that and kind of like represent yeah. that for me and like kind of talk about like what for me are like my personal nightmares. You know what I mean? Like Cause it can be kind of like different and I don't have a lot of like dreams. Yeah. Um, I don't dream a lot. I don't have yeah, a lot I'm not of like that bad in person. What? Well, you're talking about your nightmares. And I said, see, I'm not that bad in person. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're also <laughs> bad you're joke. Talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to no, cut so you it's off. Like, a bad joke. <laughs> so it's like, basically like, you know, I'm having like the personal nightmares and I'm, I, I took a lot of time to try to talk about that and kind of like um, get some stuff like off of my chest. And I was yeah. kind of coming from a different spot and like, I wanted to make an album that was like, felt like definitive for me. Like the first thing that I could like put out that was like, you know, like an actual piece of work that I was like, from start to finish, this is like what I want to put out. And it's like short and concise and like, you know what I mean? Like, so that was kind of the thought. And I even, I felt bad, like I have extra tracks too. Like for instance, MoFlo and I have a song yeah. called Drop Toxic, <laughs> called Drop Toxic yeah. that like literally like was supposed to be on the uh, album. And I mm -hmm. just like, Drop Toxic. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't fit it into like the yeah. album, like how the beat is and stuff. So I feel like, and it was meant really for us to like go back and forth on and kind of like yeah. do something like that with. So, you know, and I had a couple other songs too that didn't make the cut, like a song called Black Lodge that I play uh, live and like some other stuff like that. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like I had to like put something out that was like, this is this. You know what I mean? Right. Well, you got you you didn't want it to be just seem like it was just thrown together. You wanted to have a steady, steady flow and message throughout the majority of the album. What is that right. to say, you know? Yeah, kind of. And it's like, well, the song drop toxic would have probably like in the way that I guess it could play into the album still. I just felt like it was like, the way that I had it sequenced was like, this is how it has to be. Yeah. Like I couldn't, the way that the beat is and the beat flows, it's not even so much what we're talking about. It's more so just like about how the beat flows and like trying to find like that perfect, like flow of songs that I feel like would, you know, like 
keep people like um yeah i guess you know what i mean and i feel like because i have those extras now i can finish those extras give them good twists and like release them and now it's like an extra project so it's kind of like for perpetuating like the work <laughs> aspect of it it's like kind of good to have those types of things you know what i mean yeah yeah no and see i like i got a couple of uh you know collabs i've been working on um and already put out and i don't know exactly where they tie into the grand scheme of what I want to put out myself. So it's like, I might even, you know, have say, you know, a separate album that um, is called something else that just pretty much is going to be like a party, party mixtape. And it's going to have all these different songs with all these different collabs all on them mm -hmm. and just kind of do it that way. So it's like, Oh yeah. I've collabed with all these different people and this is what we have to offer if we work together. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of gives different flavor of things. That's kind of the idea too. It's like, you know, the more collected songs that you have, the more the more opportunities you have to like drop music and keep people captivated. So, you know, like they're like sometimes it doesn't work out like, you know, like uh I found that having like the music video attached to a song, like, you know, like I have a song like Creatures, which is the last song on Nightmare Land. And a lot of the times people like um, when they're on like Bandcamp and they're on that sort of stuff, you know, they don't start on the last song or anything like that. So it usually has like the least amount of plays. Um, but then when I put the, the video out, you know what I mean? It gets more uh, views and, even if it doesn't have more views, it definitely has more like engagement. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people see it more and they're like more connected to it because they have that like visual aspect of it. Right. Um, on the, uh, we, we put out uh, a song, uh, me and uh, Angel Face called Can't, uh, Can't Stop the Grind. And when we put that one out, we put in MP4, uh, MP4 form up on YouTube because um, we didn't have the video ready yet and what Lee ended up doing was he ended up making like an mp4 like kind of animated art show and it wasn't much but it was enough to keep it interesting while you watch and listen to the music you know even though it wasn't a full-on you know music video and uh i just thought that was cool you know in mp4 you know contents you know without not being able to drop a video right off it was like, oh, that's kind of a pretty cool idea. Um, I never personally would have thought of that. Me, me personally, I would have just put on a picture and call it a day, you know, and just laugh it up there. But that, right. that's one way of looking at it, and then there's another way. But uh, so with Nightmare Land, is that your technically – that isn't your first album then? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, technically, like I do have oh. another – like from back when I first started, which was like I said, when I was like 18 or 19, yeah. I had an album called Hypothetical Situations that doesn't exist anymore. I mean, it's like private on my band camp, but I'll never release it because it's like, you know, like a problem that I found is like you can't have music that's like too specifically personal. You know what I mean? It's not right to be like talking about other people and like, you know Drop, what I mean? Dropping like, names and business with people in that way you know yeah. if you're gonna be vague about stuff that's all right but it's like you know like and I, I don't even mean like rap beef like that's one thing like if you're gonna call somebody out right who's an asshole while they're rapping that's one thing but like it, it's like uh you know more so like your personal relationships like you can't like talk shit or like not even talk shit but like you know air out your problems with people in that form you know what I mean? Right. You got to go to those people and deal with it. So, and then I had another, whoa, I had another um, project called the static television, um, which was like 18 songs that was from, I don't know, probably around the time that I was 21. And that is, that has never been released. And I, I might one day pick songs from it and remaster them and put them out, but it's like, I don't have the beats from them anymore. So I feel like it's kind of like, 
why would I do that? You know what I mean? Yeah, like I yeah. can't perform a songs live. So it feels like it wouldn't be right to do that. Right. Right. It's always cool to still, I guess, have them in the archives, you know, to think, you know, where you started to get, you know, to now where you're at. Yeah. I, it's been like a, a long journey, but like I said, last year, I think the biggest level up for me was like in the, something that changed my mindset completely about everything that I've been doing was just like getting out and doing shows with people and connecting with people like this guy right here, Mo Flo, and, and, you know, like freestyling with people at the Flask Lounge and at uh, Rap Night Manchester and just like talking to people like, you know what I mean? Like it just that kind of like leveled me up a lot of the time. And I think made me feel like way more comfortable doing what I do than like I had been before. Like before I was just like huddled in my room, like making songs, you know what I mean? And I felt like now it's not like that. Like I'm so much more comfortable and it comes off like more natural now. So I feel like, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had to take that like long hiatus and, sometimes you got to realize when it's not working out and just like sit back and formulate a plan, you know? Right. No. And that's exactly it. Um, that a lot of my stuff, that's exactly the same, same exact scenario. You know, a lot of it needs to be pulled down and, uh, um, you know, be either put, you know, swept away under the carpet or, uh, redone completely, you know, so one, one way or the other. And, uh, you just, sometimes you just, you just gotta go back to drawing board and really actually have a you know nice map of where you're gonna go and take it and you know what the initial goal is when it becomes finished. So um, kudos to you on getting that done at a younger age because right about what you said you're 26 now. Yeah, yeah. So right right about at this point with me uh, when I was at at that age. Keep in mind, I'm only 31 going on 32. Um, but when I was at that age, um, I was putting the mic down. Um, I was uh, walking away from it. I, I had different uh, different intentions at that point in my life and uh, different plans. And uh, so I, I put the mic down, I think, for about two years at that point. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, so you understand totally, like, I, I feel like I just was like, I have way too much going on in my life at that point in time for me to even think about it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I had uh, the passing of my grandfather happen around that time. And I was just like uh, masking a lot of my like problems with that, like, you know, by like drinking and just being reckless. So I was kind of like, um, I got to step away from all of that, get my shit together. And uh, then when I finally feel like I have my shit together more and I'm in a clear head uh, space, I, you know, it's important to get that, you know, get that plan. Yeah. And get them like a viper. Well, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All I can think about is when you're doing that is you guys see Austin Powers, right? Yeah. Any Oz powers. Remember, he's like taking the pitch. He's like, do it, growl, growl, scream, no, no. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I know. They're like such old movies now in, in retrospect. It's crazy thing. I think the first one's like, was made late, late 90s. I that's, think. An, that's crazy. Yeah. I was, yeah. Uh, I was like two in the late 90s, two or three in the late 90s. Oh, damn. Well, something like that. What year were you? No, no, no. Hold on. Maybe like I can't. I can't do the math. I might have been like four. A little bit. How old were you in the mid nineties? Mid nineties. Well, we say ninety five. Yeah, ninety five. Mid nineties. Yeah, that's what (laughs) you know. That I was two. Yeah. So I was like one. Yeah. (laughs) I I was six. Oh, nice. I, I was six. I was proud, you know, wearing my big boy pants, not doing the diapers no more. <laughs> you were off to, like, first grade, dude. I'm jealous of that. In the I mid-90s. Ba- I, would, I, I would have loved to have been in first grade in the mid-90s. I was backpacking in the mid-90s. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
when God Smack was just hitting the map. <laughs> oh, dude, can I tell you a story about God Smack real quick? Dude, th- this is your interview, man. You can do whatever the fuck right. you want. <laughs> dude, <laughs> I am not a fan of God Smack, and here's why. One Ooh. time. Sorry, oh, here. <laughs> this this interview is Midwest over. Right. I'm pulling the plug. This is bullshit. No. <laughs> no, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have a legit reason. Oh, or no. maybe I have a legit reason. Go ahead. So I'm from Manchester, and as you know, like Godsmack, I'm from Manchester, New Hampshire originally, and that's where like Godsmack is uh like kind of from they're all from that area. Some of them are from like you know mass and stuff, yep. but like Manchester. Yeah, Nashville, Manchester areas where they like go. Yeah. One time at the Manchester Harley Davidson, they did like a signing, right? And my dad and I stood in line for a wicked long time to get a signing by them. Yeah. When I went up, I met Sully Erna and stuff, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool," because I was young. I don't remember how old. And yeah. uh, he was like, "Oh, what's your name?" And my real name is Phelan. And he was like, "What kind of fucking name is that?" And I was like a kid, and like. My dad screamed at him and like, cause my dad's got, you know, anger problems and uh, it was, it was a whole ordeal. So I'm like, I got to stay away from God smack forever. All right. So I, I get that in that, you know, aspect of that. Have you really not listened to the music? No, I didn't Dude, he put disrespect on my name. No, I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing. I, if anyone disrespected my family out of God smack, oh man, they get they be getting hate mail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I no, I I feel you, man. I totally get that. But uh, you know, freaking uh, yeah, I uh, I couldn't believe this uh, little funny story about God smack just to enlighten you a little bit. Um, if you ever <laughs> heard of the song "You Cry Like a Bitch." It's been on the radio before. That was actually uh, in reference to the lead singer of Bullet from Your Valentine. What? Yes. What that, kind of? What kind of? That's a super random diss that they would take, dude. <laughs> so it it wasn't random. Um, it was something along the lines. They were all on tour together, and oh, okay. um, needless to say, the um, lead singer of Bullet for My Valentine. Um, pretty much like complained something along the lines that they should be headlining over God smack, you know, pretty much ego, ego bullshit. Yeah. Uh, to sum it up. Uh, and uh, so God smack decided to write a song about it and uh, said, I told you one too many times you cry like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, that kind of like, I always kind of like God Smack, but when I heard that song after hearing that story, I was like, oh, that really <laughs> makes my day. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've dealt with a lot of people like that, that just think yeah, yeah. they're above everybody else and, you know, like roll out the red carpet, step out of my way. You know, yeah. so I'm just saying, like, yeah, I get that. And that was cool that he instantly made a song about someone doing that. But Enough, right. about, enough about God smack because I know it is, it's uh, burning a hole in your freaking soul right now. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I mean, honestly, I don't actually, it's not like I hate, I'm not like going to bed like I hate God smack, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> going to bed with a gun every night, like just give me one reason, just give me one reason. <laughs> I hope I see that guy. I hope I see him one day. <laughs> Oh man, that's great. Uh, so, all right. One album, uh, Nightmare Land, that's been put out. Now, you got something uh, aside from that that you got forecasted for this year, 2021? Oh, I have a lot of stuff possibly coming out this year. Um, one thing definitely coming out this year is uh, my album with a Bizza called Buck 75. I actually just recently um, released uh, the first song off of it called Seven Circles, or I guess technically the second song off of it, because last year I released the song Elephant Man, okay. and that's going to be on it. Um, but this is like the most recent single and what I think to be like the first like official like this is coming out soon type of like uh thing seven circles seven circles <laughs> yeah so 
goes hard. Yeah, I love that song. <laughs> and it's cool because like with Nate Bizza, I sent him over a totally different beat that he had sent me. I sent him something and then he sent me back this like the new version of it, which is the version that the people here, the people. Yeah. We the and, people. Uh, yeah, yeah, we the people. And it's like so much, it's the vibe for it is like so much better and like more on with like what I think we both like had in mind originally. So that was really good. Other stuff that I have probably coming out this year, like I said, I, I'll probably do a lot of like singles. I have, um, like I, I said, I have that drop toxic thing. And also me and Mo have this like group that we're going to be, once we figure out what we're doing with our beat situation and how we're going to like split it up between the two of us, <laughs> we have, we're, we have a group called sector nine, sector nine. Sector nine. that's coming in. I think that's I like that. Numbers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a nine. I think yeah, sector nine. nine. Oh, oh. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then, um, I have um, something called. Well, I have a project called Seven Eight Nine that'll probably come out sometime this year. Um, mm -hmm. That is going to be a collaboration between myself and Abiza and I Nine. Um, right. Something that we like been putting like together, and I, honestly, I like. Just want to do a lot of number projects. Yeah. You know, I got seven, eight, nine. I got sector nine. I'll probably do all sorts of other numbers. Who knows? Yeah, I'm a bucks, numbers guy. Buck 75. Buck 75. Yeah, I'm a numbers <laughs> guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm a numbers yeah. guy. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll have to pitch a number number idea for a track for us at you. See, see what you say. Yeah, do it. Send uh, it over to me. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely. I'll, I'll brainstorm something for you. I would love that, man. And like I said, honestly, like I do a lot of, I want to work with a lot more artists in general. You know what I mean? Like it, sometimes it's hard to keep up with things because like life is hard, but like I'm not working a lot and stuff because of COVID. And, and so I feel like my time is like freed up for that sort of thing. So, you know, like last year in 2020, like I did, a ridiculous amount of things you know what i mean like i produced an album for mo i did my album i did the gift with pomac and dj myth i did like um some singles with a biza and a live ep from rap night you know what i mean like i just yep. tried to keep coming with stuff so that um you know it's out there and available for people to enjoy if they want to check it out yeah yeah no definitely um yeah because uh i was uh i was going to jump off with that with something and now you know when i took that hit the idea just went right out of my head <laughs> uh. but that's okay because there's a still a follow-up thing i wanted to ask you as well um we got kind of dabbled into it earlier a little bit when we talked about uh my fucking doom uh passing away um what kind of like other side from him what other, who else was kind of like your inspiration that helped you kind of get into the game anyways um man it's like hard to like it okay so originally it's like mf doom because again uh, adult swim influences heavily for me so it's like mf doom and lp from run the jewels Okay, those yeah. were like the two that i started with and because like i use a lot of words a lot of the times like it's, people think aesop rock and i i try to like <laughs> not use the deep voice not use the deep registers of my voice so that that doesn't happen because like i do not like want to be compared to aesop rock in that way because i feel like as much as i love him until recently like i feel like a lot of his stuff is like really like choppy and robotic and i'm trying to like get out of that phase so i'm like listening to like a lot of outcasts if you listen to the gift i'm doing a lot of like da -da 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 -da. like even almost yeah. even like i listen to like old snoop dog and hear like his like <laughs> little whips and stuff like that and i'm trying to do like my own like weird backpack version of that in a weird way but not 
I don't know, like, uh, not really, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to take influence from, like, kind of everywhere and, like, play around now. But, yeah, so it's, like, MF Doom and LP kind of were, like, the original one because LP's production and MF Doom's production that they both do themselves um, is, like, they're both amazing at producing as well as rapping. And so, for me, that was a value that, like, I had from the beginning was to, like, make sure that I could like do everything. Like if I had to, I could produce myself and record myself and write my raps and you know what I mean? Like kind of right. do all of those things. So I didn't have to like try to rely on right, so right. many people. Um, and then I can make like collaboration friends and then, then the weight is lifted off my shoulders and I can, you know, do other projects with people now and do my own production when i want to and do production for other people which is always fun like bad american moflo's bad american yeah it was so much fun like i made this pack of beats and sent it to him he wanted the like the certain ones that spoke to him and then he like plowed through those and to hear somebody plow through my beats but like totally do their own thing is like super sorry super super cool yeah and like um I hope to do more of that this year as well. But yeah, sorry. So my influences, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Jizza from uh, from the Wu Tang Clan. I love yep. that. Liquid Swords was like a huge yeah. thing. Yep. Yeah, like that that influenced me like a whole bunch. And I feel like you know that shows up sometimes. Like uh, I don't know. What do we, I feel like? What else influences you? Yeah. What influences me? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, was uh well you already said you said cool Keith earlier right oh cool Keith yeah I mean I don't know all sorts of stuff a really. lot of, a lot of it you've said it's usually MF Doom and LP though yeah right off the bat are like the two biggest ones yeah I've had a couple dudes like tell me that I remind them of LP and I'm like that's like a huge compliment I feel like I'm doing my thing. And I, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I feel like my mm. style has really become like my own unique brand, mm. but it's like, those are kind of like where my influences are and what I like listen to. Yeah. And like I said, Outkast also is like a weird, like that. I feel like that's the thing that people wouldn't expect. You know what I mean? Like, listen, I love Equemini and I love like back when I was in high school, I used to have like the AT Aliens vinyl and stuff like that. And I would yeah. spin that. So like, I don't know. I feel like big boy being like, da -da 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 you know what I mean? And like, kind of like flowing off the margin, but like, you know what I mean? Always mm -hmm. kind of finding like back into the pocket. I feel like that sort of like influences me as well. So. No, it, it definitely. Um, uh, like when you're talking about saying like you're listening to outcasts and all that stuff, I wouldn't necessarily say you would not listen to it but that wouldn't be my first pick for someone like you so yeah i could see why you would say that um yeah you know in retrospect like looking at me you know here i am wearing a johnny cash shirt but yes i do listen to a lot of johnny cash well you said that earlier when you said that you had the like you said you were the reaper of rap i was like you're wearing the johnny cash shirt i feel like if you ever do a video as the reaper of rap, you need to wear the Johnny Cash shirt. I feel like that's like <laughs> yeah, fair yeah, enough. So. Fair enough. No, uh, Johnny Cash, yeah, especially his uh, last album that he did before he passed. Um, I mean, I liked a lot of his older stuff too, but that last album that he did before he passed, um, just you know, talking about you know how he's not even when he's put in the grave, he's still not going to be dead and stuff, and there's no you know no grave that could hold them down so to speak and all that stuff and it was just like yeah mm. you built a legacy you're absolutely right there is no grave that can hold you down and right. uh, it just that those types of words really spoke to me and uh but yeah so johnny cash just one one example of someone that you know people wouldn't think i'd listen to right off the bat especially knowing who i am but you know so i i get that all day i actually like outcast a lot myself <laughs> so oh and I, I also forgot to mention like idea and abilities i think that's also like pretty important you know what i mean like yeah i feel like especially like his first album firstborn his first and last album like the second album is really good because it's like 
he came back and was like, you guys said I couldn't rap because I was talking about philosophy. So I'm just going to come and murder you on all of these songs. But the first <laughs> album is like all philosophy and like really like cool storytelling tracks, which I'm trying to do more like storytelling and like world building. Even yeah. if they're like fictional stories, I'm trying to like do more like, you know what I mean? Like really get that like Stephen King, like, you know, mm. like uh, William S. Burroughs Naked Lunch type rap in there and make it all like weird for people and get them, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I hear you, man. I try to make, I try to make certain references out of, you know, in new songs that I do, I try to make references of like first songs that I've done, you know, even mm -hmm. if it's just one line or whatever, just to, you know, kind of always tie it in together. Like, oh, geez listen back now to that song to understand why I dropped that line and referenced it or whatever, or the song title or whatever, stupid, you know? Um, but yeah. yeah, so no, that's cool, man. Um, you know, because inspiration, I think is like, it's weird how it works. Cause I mean, I was inspired by a lot of rock and that's kind mm -hmm. of how I ended up here. It, you know, it's, I went from rock to started doing rap to now I've gotten to know a lot of you guys out there at Monday of the Minds um, and Rap Night and uh, mostly Monday of the Minds though. And just, you know, you know, linking up at these events and uh, just seeing you guys give it your all. And uh, it's just weird how it all transitions and how it comes back like full circle. Cause like, I'm a talking person. That's what I do. You know, and who would have thought all this time later I would have my own talk show talking dirt with dirt, you know, right. <laughs> you know, and it's just, you know, and I never thought that rap of all things would bring me to this point. So honestly, kind of, I was in the same boat because, like I said, I didn't start rapping until I was like really, uh, like eighteen or nineteen. But before that, since I was 14, I had been playing in metal bands and I had played in like New York and I played like all over New England. Like New York is as far as we went. We went upstate New York and Syracuse and that was yeah. it. And then like played a ton of like shows. So I feel like for me, when I finally got into rap and I wanted to break out and do my own solo thing, it was like easier because I, I booked our shows and I did all of that. I kind of like managed us when I was in the band. So it was like, yeah. I could manage myself a lot easier than I could manage like four people. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And I could book my own shows and like talk to promoters and like feel comfortable doing that. And then I was like, this is like hip hop, like, you know, is amazing. Like, I feel like I made so many more like personal connections doing this, like freestyling and like, Oh, yeah. you know like hanging out outside till three o'clock in the morning and like uh <laughs> you know heading out to the red arrow in manchester and like you know eating pancakes and freestyling about weird stuff and uh you yeah, know what i mean weird. like yeah. i just feel so much more comfortable and like uh you know like the friendships uh and memories that i make doing this are a lot more like solidified than it was when I was like playing in a band. Hip hop's a beautiful oh, yeah. culture. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful culture. I'd like go uh, yeah. get up. <laughs> no, Spit those facts. No, 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 no. I'm just saying it is though. Like I don't know. I've, well, always, I've always loved hip hop. You know, personally. Um, as soon as I've heard it, man. As soon as like the first time I heard it, I was like. All right, this is it. Like this, <laughs> this is what it is. You know what I mean? You know, so like, and like you said, same thing. Once you get into it and you really start, you know, you you get out of your comfort zone. You start talking to people, meeting people. Like, you do. Get, you get closer with them. You yeah. know what I mean? And and I feel like it's there's there's more of an acceptance of people. Like there's a range of people. Yeah, there's such a variety Respect. of people in this culture. You know what I mean? At this point, that like, you, you almost can't find someone that isn't accepted somewhere, right? In, right. In one way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? So that's. I just think it's a beautiful culture, man. It's a yeah. beautiful thing. No, it definitely <laughs> is. The most. 
It definitely <laughs> is. And I, I, you know, I will agree too. Uh, also with the, you know, the band aspect of it, um, because I had the same issues, it, you know, to get everybody on the same path, the same vision, the same goal, you know, it, it's so hard. Everyone's got different things going on in their lives at different times and to get the schedule down just to be consistent with the practice just let alone you know actually going on a tour or whatever um it can be very difficult and uh you know I, I had the same issues when i was in the band um before rap and um it was short-lived it was only about a year and um you know we came up with one original and everything else was covers that we did we were 80s hair metal uh cover band for the most part so you know I mean, that's kind of sweet though oh it was I gotten seen. It, it, dude it was we were called cutthroat and Sick, dude. and you know it was just it, it, we wanted to you know do 80s hair metal uh or hair band rather and we did some like heavier stuff too so we did like some metallica we did some uh, Motley Crue, some ACDC. Um, so we had a good little mixed variety going on there. But the issue was the guy that did like the ACDC voice decided to bail out. So these oh. guys, the rest of the band wanted to freaking continue and still do these sets. And it's like, I don't have that high pitch of a voice to do an ACDC voice. I, I don't. I love the band. I'm not going to dishonor them by doing it. You know, it's just, yeah. So, um, so we had to kind of switch up the sets a little bit and that kind of, before we even got to the point of going back on and touring without the other guy, we kind of all dismembered and did, you know, our own separate things. And uh, that's when I kind of inverted to hip hop myself, but um, long, long story short. Yeah. It's never with me, but yeah, um, <laughs> getting back to what I was getting at was, yeah, it's oh, keeping a band together is very hard. You got, you guys got to always have the same vision, the same passion um, and the same goal, because if you're not on the same, you know, goal, uh, you're not going to work well together. Um, if one's right. doing it, one's doing it for money and one's doing it just for fun. Yeah. It ain't going to work. Um, but that's what I find anyways. Maybe some people can make it work and if they can, more power to you. But from what I've learned, you can't make it work that way. But uh, so you guys talking about uh, collaborating and uh, you guys got uh, you said a couple more songs that you two are doing together coming out. Well, so our original song that we had was called Drop Toxic, which has graphic melee cutting on it. Okay, um, yeah. And that's been kicking around for a while. Mo actually laid a verse on that because originally it was supposed to be for my album. <clears throat> and I was like, I was struggling myself to write a verse for it that pertained like to the album, <clears throat> which is why I never recorded it. Yeah. So I still have it and, you know, wanting to like, um, like finish that song definitively and go back and forth and drop toxic like we did if you go to my live ep on Bandcamp, you can hear a version of us doing it freestyle yeah 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 a little yeah we kind of did a little bit yeah which uh which is sweet that's <laughs> that was fun dude yeah dude <laughs> i love honestly like that's the thing i could we could do a 300 freestyle versions of it and make them all like you know and it's Clip funny too because graphic since graphic melee did the cuts, he actually I couldn't make it to another show that he did a, a freestyle over the drop toxic beat and graphic freestyled with him over the oh, drop he, toxic beat. Yeah, yeah. So the, all three of us being on that together kind of all worked out in a weird way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I had the the way that I structure like my live set is I put my beats like together. Like, I splice them together to make it easier for the DJ and to, like, so that I have, like, a pacing in mind. So I was like, oh, the Drop Toxic is, like, in the middle of this, so I don't know what to do. And then I'm like, maybe Graphic Melee will do it. And he did. But yeah. he did not do it, you know, like, like in a disrespectful way. It was it was a beautiful homage to what Mo had already done. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So he did good. What are you talking about? He did amazing. <laughs> so, he did the amazing. So he does it, good. It, 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 a lot of.